What role does DNA evidence play in solving crimes? Let's ask our expert. DNA has received a lot of media attention, and I think rightfully so. It has a, a fantastic power of discrimination. When you've run a genotype and you compare it back to someone, the random match probability of that particular profile is usually in the billions or trillions to one. Very strong evidence here, much stronger than eyewitness testimony. We've had DNA technology since basically the mid 80s, but we we're using a different type of technology. So now you, you have a much greater sensitivity to the technique. What I mean by greater sensitivity is before you may have needed, you know, 50 nanograms or a microgram of DNA, and now you're, you're, you're down to less than a nanogram of DNA. So uh, you need less and less DNA to do this. When you have a, a violent crime happen, you almost always have an exchange of biological material. In a sexual assault, it's going to be semen. In, in, a, in a murder or an assault, it'll usually be blood. It takes a vanishingly small amount of DNA to, to get a full profile. So a handled object that may, you know, maybe the, the perpetrator left you know, three or four cells behind, you can still get a full profile off of that. I've had cases where the DNA was relatively fresh, but was not kept in good conditions. If it's kept in damp conditions and you've got mold uh, growing on your exhibit, the DNA will degrade rather quickly. Make sure your exhibits are bone dry. And if you can't dry them, if it's a piece of tissue, you freeze it. The DNA will last essentially forever. As for cold cases, do you have DNA from the scene? And if there is, what kind of condition is it in? Can we get a full profile off of it? And if you have a suspect where you can get your known sample from and compare it to the question sample, well, a cold case is no different than a fresh case.